Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's, yes, another Realme phone. So they've released the Realme 7, the Realme 7 Pro, and the last phone for the year that is at least, at least I hope, is the Realme 7 5G. So it has the Dimensity 800U with a 5G modem. If you wanted the 5G for a value price, then you got it with this particular phone. Now it is running, of course, Android 10, Realme UI, it has six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, it's UFS 2.1 spec, is the model that Realme sent out to me here in exchange for the review you're watching right, right now. Now, 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt charging, 48 megapixel main rear camera, 16 megapixel selfie. That's enough of reading the spec sheet. Let's take a look and see if this phone is worth the price tag for what is on offer from Realme. Along with the phone, of course, you are going to find in the box a TPU case. So it is great that manufacturers are continuing to do this. Give us an included case straight out of the box. Important guy, a little bit of information there. Now this case here does have a raised lip around where the camera rear glass is and a cutout for the power button slash fingerprint reader. Our charger, not a bad size. It's 30 watts, so it will take approximately one hour to fully charge that 5,000 milliamp hour battery. But I'll give you an exact time in this in-depth review and then our USB cable, and you can see just in here is our SIM tray tool. The Realme 7 5G has a 6.5 inch screen, it's full HD plus resolution, the build quality, the frame around the outside, this is all plastic, so just like the previous Realme 7 and the 7 Pro that I reviewed in the channel, we've got a SIM tray tool here on the upper left hand side, this takes two nano SIMs or a micro SD card, the volume up and down buttons, they've got a good feel to them, but they are plastic, just like that frame. Now we have a nice sort of mirror finish here on the back. Now it doesn't pick up fingerprints too bad, a few little smudges as you can see right there, and I do like the way it does reflect here. Now this is made out of plastic, some people see this as a con, others as a pro, so if you drop it, it won't smash like glass will, but it doesn't feel quite as premium in hand. Now for our cameras here, we have a 48 megapixel main sensor f1.8, it's from Samsung, and we've got an 8 megapixel ultra wide f2.3, two 2 megapixel cameras, one handles black and white for a portrait effect, the other is for macros, and to be honest, like I've mentioned in other videos, I really wish they didn't do this, I would rather have a higher quality ultra wide with autofocus instead of the two 2 megapixel cameras. There's also a dual tone LED flash, and this protrudes by about one and a half millimeters, the camera glass. Up the top, we do have a secondary microphone, so there is no IR transmitter on this one, but good to see they put the mic in this, the two microphones, because the Realme 7 only had a single mic, and it didn't actually offer any noise cancellation in calls. Down below here, loudspeaker, so just a single loudspeaker, microphone, Type-C port here, does not support video out and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with relatively good quality. It doesn't have any static hiss or any problems and a good loudness. On the right hand side, our fingerprint reader, it is the always on capacitive type and it doubles as a power button. Now this fingerprint reader I'll demonstrate is very good. You can see that is really quite quick and I have found it to be extremely accurate and I actually prefer this over an in-screen one. Why? Because they simply work better and it is faster and more accurate. Now it does come with a pre-applied screen protector on it, which is great. Again, a lot of manufacturers are doing this. In fact, most of them are, at least the ones out of China that I review. A front 16 megapixel webcam here. Now this one has an aperture of f2.0 and it's been used in their other previous mobile phones. No changes there. Earpiece at the top doesn't have any loudspeaker capabilities. There's no status LED with this either. And the frame around the outside of this Gorilla Glass 3 screen, 6.5 inches as mentioned before, is plastic as well around the outside. So even though it's plastic, if I give it a bit of a flex in hand, it doesn't make any creaks, it doesn't feel cheap, it is a solid quality build, it just will not feel as premium, of course, as the more expensive phones with metal frames around them and glass on the rear. Onto the screen now, so the resolution of this one is 1080 by 2400. We have a maximum brightness that I have measured with my meter of approximately 443 nits. So it is not the brightest screen out there. You can still make it out in direct sunlight as you can see from the sample I'm showing you. I took that when I was out of course, and that's the main thing. Now looking at whites here, is it a uniformed white with this IPS panel? It is not because just on the edges is where you see it. And it's normally just a light background and it's not an issue for most people, but 
there is, I wanted to point out a tiny little bit of what I call like a shadow around the cutouts. I've pointed this out in many of my videos of IPS panels, and it's just a trait we're gonna get with the IPS, unfortunately. If it was OLED or AMOLED, we would not be seeing that, and we would also see uh, deeper blacks. Now, touch response is very good. I've got no problems with that, and I love the fact that it's 120 hertz, of course, at this price point is great. And Realme does give us a lot of settings under the display here. So adaptive brightness is there, of course, all phones have this. Dark mode, that is another thing that's very handy. Now dark mode with an IPS panel is not actually going to be saving us really any battery life, unfortunately, like in OLED, but it's easier on the eyes. We've got our eye comfort mode, which is just reducing the blue light. And then you've got other settings in here, adaptive sleep there as well. You can adjust the uh, refresh rate. So by default, it's actually on auto select. Now auto select is Realme's adaptive variable refresh rate. It will change depending on what you're doing. So the UI might be running at 120 frames per second, 120 hertz, and then you'll go into something else that's more just like a static image. It will drop it right down and save on battery life. But for my testing and the whole time using the phone, I've kept it on 120 just to keep it really smooth. And it does offer, of course, the best possible experience experience there. Now we've got other scaling options there, which is all standard and normal. And what about the gestures? So swiping to go up home, recent apps and everything, that is all working really good. So I'm very pleased with the optimization of this ROM, the performance, the fluidity of it, it is very good. Most of your applications, they do load up really quick, which is great to see. Now, when you sometimes go up to your recent apps, if you've been gaming or you minimize and get out of something, you might notice then a couple of frame dips, just minor ones, but it really does not seem to bog down or hard to bog down. It's only when you've got like a lot of heavy apps opened in the background that this may happen. Now, task management, RAM management, a little bit heavy handed. I'm seeing a lot of this recently because of the more aggressive battery management to save our battery. They close apps off in the background. So things like Antutu will probably have to reload if it's been sitting there, if it's a third party app. Now, there are ways around this, of course, that you can just simply go in and select the option there to lock it, which in fact I've already done. So you go in and lock that, and that should keep it alive in the background and it won't kill it off. So let's have a look first also here at a couple of little bits and pieces that uh, I have taken screenshots off. So when you first get this particular phone, you'll notice this, that you're gonna have about 112 gigabytes free. And as I mentioned, it's running Android 10, Realme UI 1. And you do get a little bit of bloatware, but nothing like some of the manufacturers, like Samsung, for example, uh, Xiaomi and others, they put a lot of bloatware. I mean, some of those brands out there, I remove almost two gigabytes of bloatware rubbish that they put on there. And you only get about three or four, five, for example, bloatware apps on here, like Facebook's there, we've got WP Office. I know some of those things are handy to people, but I consider it to be bloat, for me personally anyway. So the Antutu score, it's good. It's not bad at all. Dimensity, 800U, performance is, I think, for the price of what this phone is selling for and going to be selling for even cheaper. This is great. Uh, not a weakness, but the GPU is not as powerful as others. And with some gaming, which I'll show you later on, we do actually have to lower settings down just to get the best possible frame rate. Now the internal storage, UFS 2.1 spec. Um, it's not bad at all. I mean, sequential reads here are very good. Writes, yeah, I mean, not amazing the write speed there, but the random reads and writes, they are important and they are really, not bad at all. So that's not gonna bottleneck this particular phone here. It would probably be more the GPU that would be some kind of bottleneck for it. So camera two API support level three is here, which is great, but yes, it is MediaTek, meaning to get that Gcam port may be a little bit more difficult and require a little bit more patience and hunting around to find something or something on XDA developers. Wide Vine Level 1 support is there, so that is great. And you can see the supported refresh rates, HDR10 as well. And we do have a safety net status pass, so great for your banking applications. And of course it does have NFC, this particular uh, version that I have. Now this is a bug, something's going on. I've seen this on the Realme 7 and the 7 Pro, uh, that we cannot exceed wireless speeds for some reason, I don't know why, of 200 megabits per second have placed some sort of cap. It's either MediaTek or Realme needs to address this. I've noticed with the Dimensity 1000 Plus, no such problem. You can go right up to almost 900 megabits per second, but this is capped at 200 for some unknown reason, which means download speeds can be a little bit slower, especially when you're downloading huge amounts of data, like seven gigabytes for that large game. GPS works really well. It, forget the MediaTek GPS 
of a couple of years back that was terrible. No, it's actually quite good. Now, good accuracy is well, well down to one meter. Now, battery time charging here, 17% to 100. That took me this time 53 minutes. And our battery life fixed test, 200 nit calibrated display. Ran for 12 hours and 25 minutes, and I forced the 120 hertz, okay? This is a decent score. It is not the best I have seen, but it is still very good for 120 hertz. Now, if you leave it on the adaptive refresh rate, then you can see, I would say, probably about 15 hours. So a good two days for most people, this particular find. The battery life is good. So charging from 7% to 100, this time here took me just under one hour. So it is fast to charge considering this larger capacity we have. Onto our gaming performance. So this is not an absolute monster if it comes to gaming performance. I did have to run actual low settings here because I found that when I ran medium settings or higher, you wouldn't get a very decent frame rate in demanding games. You get around 40 frames per second on Battle Royale with Call of Duty right now, as you can see I'm playing. On the multiplayer maps, it's not too bad. It's around 60 frames per second between 55 and 60. And then Grim Fowler and also Real Racing did run really well. But what really surprised me was the thermals. The thermals on this phone are, are just crazy, okay? It runs so cool. After one hour of gaming, it only got up to 35 degrees. Unbelievable. I've never seen this. Well, not this year at least. A phone that runs so cool after one hour of heavy gaming. On to our audio quality. So voice calls, they do have noise cancellation with this one. It's not like the Realme 7, which lacked it, but the Pro had it. This is like the Pro, it's got it. And we've just got the single downwards firing speaker right here. Now you can use your Bluetooth audio just fine. Wide audio as well sounds good. Maybe not the greatest I've heard, but it's still very good. And that single loudspeaker, I would rate as... It's not bad, but it would have been nice if they'd also had one in the earpiece. But here is a sample of it, of course, at 100% volume. Moving over to our cameras now. So the front-facing camera, which you're currently looking at, does not have any electronic image stabilization at the time of me posting this video. Now hopefully it will come in a firmware update. We have seen in the past that when Realme pushes out updates, they normally do later on add electronic image stabilization. I don't know why it's missing here, and it's a shame we do not have it because it kind of ruins this quality here. As you see, it shakes around. The previous phones with the front-facing cameras have had the electronic image stabilization. But let's take a look now at the rear cameras. 4K 30 frames per second sample. So we have electronic image stabilization with a 48 megapixel Samsung sensor. And as you can see, as I walk ahead, it does a reasonably good job of removing just the motion of me walking here. Now if I jog, you can see it then does shake around a little bit without any optical image stabilization. Of course in this category and pricing group, you wouldn't expect it to have it. Now the autofocus, I find, does work well. I haven't really experienced any problems so far testing it out. And overall for 4K30, I think the quality is reasonably good here that we're looking at. But let's have a look at the ultra wide now, which is 1080p maximum. The ultra wide quality is not as good as the main camera. I find it slightly disappointing because we don't seem to have any electronic image stabilization using the ultra wide camera. So we get a lot more in this shot, but it doesn't look as sharp and as detailed, of course, as 4K from the main sensor. A little bit of blurring and noise around the edges I've also picked up on. And the main thing is that lack of stabilization, which I hope Realme will add in an up and coming firmware update.
All right, so what we saw from the camera samples that I just showed you, that nighttime performance, not so great, but I was actually pleasantly surprised with some of those daytime stills looking very good, especially that hibiscus flower. A lot of cameras and even flagships will not actually be able to capture all the different colors of that flower around the little veins on the petals and things would be normally clipped out, even on expensive phones, so impressive to see that there. So far, with the phone and my time using it, I'm enjoying it. The build quality, while yes, all plastic, that a lot of people may say is a con, is actually solid good, there's no creaks, there's no cheap feeling to it, it doesn't have any rough edges, nothing like that. It's actually a good build for a plastic phone. Now that fingerprint reader, as I demonstrated, and even now, that it's very quick, works well. Face unlocking, just to mention that too, I don't normally use it myself anymore because it's not really that secure, but it does work good with this. Now it does fully charge in about an hour, and the UI is very fluid, it's fast, it's great, it's well optimized, there's not a lot of bloatware in the ROM. It is very, very good in terms for the price and what Realme are offering with this phone. But not everything's perfect. I did notice that little problem with the maximum wireless speeds. I don't know what's going on there, I hope that Realme will be able to fix this with a firmware update, or it could actually be a limitation with the MediaTek wireless for some reason. Their wireless 5G on the 5 gigahertz band, that is, it doesn't want to go over 200 megabits per second, and even on the 2 gigahertz band, 2.4 gigahertz that is, it won't go over that either, so something is up there. It should be actually a little bit faster. GPS performance as well as good. Gaming performance is maybe one of the downsides to this really, because you can run a lot of those, you can in fact run all of the demanding titles. Fine, but you need to use lower settings, I think, to get that fluid frame rate, as I showed you with Call of Duty. But fantastic thermals, I really did not expect this. Like, I, I played and played and played on this for an hour, and I go, that can't be right. Maybe the screen was off because, oh, but I was using it, of course. I was there playing. How can it not get over 35 degrees? It just runs so cool. It almost feels like they've almost throttled the chip down to maintain such great thermals, but they haven't. And then you don't lose that much battery. Gaming for like an hour, I think it was about 12% battery I lost, and it's, that's unbelievable. That's really, really good. So it looks like it's quite good for gaming, for long-term gaming, but it won't give you the absolute best frames per second. The highest visuals with this won't be there yet, and a lot of developers aren't simply supporting the Dimensity 800U. Now, all up, I think for what you're getting as a package, for that 279 pounds, I would think, yeah, that's okay. It's not bad at all, but of course they're gonna be having that special price for Black Friday, which drops the price then down to 229 pounds, and that's when I say definitely for 229 pounds, it's worth it. You're getting quite a lot, the faster refresh rate, all that spec I talked about, the larger battery, great battery life. That then I think is worth it. So thank you so much for watching my review of the Realme 7 5G, and I do hope to see you back in the channel with the next up and coming video.